internal stability of the system that means input output stable system does not mean that all other signal internal signal will be stable. So, let us consider one system that is we have a reference input the controller then controller output is corrupted with a disturbance input disturbance then plant plant output also part of with a output disturbance. Then the measurement noise del y is a d y is the measurement noise output is corrupted with the noise or it is sometimes we call it is a sensor noise and this is this is feedback. Let us see here we have how many inputs are there these inputs are unwanted signal d u d y and d n. D u is the input disturbance and d y is the output disturbance and d n is the measurement noise. Generally disturbances are same frequency as the reference or input low frequency signal whereas, in the measurement noises are high frequency signals. So, these things we keep in mind disturbance is a low frequency signal and measurements noise are noises are the high frequency signals. So, let us call we have a if you see this one four inputs are there r d u d y d n out of four three input signals are unwanted signal and we take the consideration each summer output is the which summer output that signal what we will get you will take as an output. So, we have a how many outputs are there this summer output e this summer output u of t u of p and this summer output is y and this summer output is y. Again we have a four outputs are there. Let us see what is the output of the system due to the effect of all inputs that is first. So, our <coughs> our inputs are input signals are input signals are signals E then D u then D y then D n this is the input signals. Then output signals are input signal r this is r sorry this is r. So, output signal is E then summer each summer output is u p then this summer output is y this summer output is y n. So, if you see we have a four inputs four output system if we now you want to find out and further we consider that we have a single input single output system and that is linear linear time invariant system. We consider single input single output linear time invariant systems. For this one we will see what is this output y of s form the Laplace transform output due to the all inputs. So, you first will find out what is the Laplace transform of that means output y as a four components one component y 1 d 2 r s y 2 component d 2 d u and y 3 component d 2 d y and y 4 component d 2 y n a d u d n. So, total output having a four components each is due to the each inputs that are d u d y d n. So, let us find out first we consider since it is a linear time invariant system the output of y that means y 1 due to r 1 only keeping all inputs is assuming there is no inputs d u d y d y we want to find out the output y which is denoted by y 1 due to r. So, it is a simple our closed loop system standard closed loop system. So, loop we can write it g s c s forward path transformation divided by 1 plus loop transformations that is g s c s into r s. So, this component we can consider this component 
we can consider it as if this is y 1 of s due to the input of r s. Then we will find out what is the output contribution in this side due to this input only other inputs are assuming 0. So, if you see this one if you can read out this one you see this is the input is going that then our feedback is minus C s. So, it is a forward path transformation is G and loop transformation you see this is not there this is not there this is not there it is going here then this output then straight away with this controller it is feeding back to here. So, forward path is this one then loop transformation is G s C s into D capital D u d u of f so, plus transform of this one is d u of s. Next is we will find out what is this what is the output due to this input only. So, now see this is 0 this is 0 assume this is 0. So, now if I read off for this case I will read off and then I will explain how it is coming that 1 1 plus g s c s into d y of s read out this, this this circuit when this input is only present other input is not there. So, I just read out this one d u. So, this is the output is going here this is the this is going from there this y I am feeding back feeding back. So, it is coming here c s g s this is not there this is not there this input. So, it is a c s g s and then it is feedback here minus. So, this is d y and this is your output y you can say this output is y 3 of t. Then what is this output here? this one is 1 by this output this error signal you can say this nothing but a 1 by g s by s s agree 1 by 1 plus g s s s in this one this is a standard block diagram. So, you can find out what is the transformation between this and this forward path transformation is 1 and feedback transformation is g s s s. So, that is we got it next part is left is next part what is left is plus ok I will write next page next part is is plus. So, this will be due to this one due to this one what is the output here. Now, you can assume this signal you see what is the signal y n y is coming here d n is going here this then r is 0 d is 0 agree this is 0. So, actually y plus d n is coming here and this is going here you one can think of it this d n is equivalent to r if this is coming and with minus set if I show it here with a minus sign here d n is the input and y is the feedback is coming from this one. So, it is same as our what is the transformation forward path transformation and loop transformation then g s c s divided by 1 plus g s c s minus d n s. So, this I can redraw if you like I can I will redraw one plus g s c s that will be minus d n of s what I am telling it this signal I equivalently I consider as if this signal is d n is here. Because this signal is y plus d n d n d n plus this this will be minus y minus d n. So, minus d n I am taking into this one and then I find out the transformation between the y that is uh, between d n to y or you read off as it is this one similar to this one you read all this circuit when input is this one output is that one. So, it will come this one. Now, this total output of the system 
due to the reference input, due to the input disturbance, due to the output disturbance and this is due to the noise in the measurements of sensor noise due to the sensor noise. So, one can see this one similarly this is for E s y s y s. So, this summer output we have a summer output here we have a summer output u of p here we have a summer output y n. Similarly, I can similar manner similar manner one can write E of s that I am not showing you can easily find out this one E s this E of s the signal E of small e is having a four components uh, due to R 1 R due to D u due to D y due to D n. So, that you find out the transformation between input this and output this when these other D zeros find out the transformation between the input this agree when output is this one when these these are zeros and similarly you find out other inputs for other inputs also. So, if you calculate this one you will get 1 plus g s c s into r s minus g s 1 plus g s c s into d u of s. <coughs> d u of s minus 1 plus g s c of s d y of s plus 1 plus g s c s d n of s. Now, you see what is the error signal e of s in Laplace domain is contribution due to the four inputs that is what you know due to R s due to D u input disturbance due to D y that is output disturbance due to the measurement noise this. Similarly, you can write there is an another output of the summer output is y y you have written. So, this E s is written then u of p I can write it u of p similarly u of p s is equal to c of s divided by 1 plus g of s c of s into r of s plus 1 plus g of s c of s d u of s minus c of s 1 plus g of s c of s into d y of s plus 1 plus this is g f plus this will be a next one is minus c of s 1 plus g of s into c of s into d n of s. You see that is you find out what is the transformation between the input r and the signal y of s keeping all other input 0. It is just a, the way we have shown earlier the same way you have to find out only your input is r s that y p is the output. Again another contribution in y u of p due to the input u of s input and what is the y of p is the output was the transformation between the input d u and u p find out the transformation between d y u p find the transformation of between input d from the input d n and u p. So, this transformation you have obtained then another signal you have that is y n signal find out y of s transformation between this input reference input to the output this one from this input to the this output this input to this output this input to this output find out the transformation 
you consider one at a time input into the systems. So, that you will get it if you do this one that you will get it y of n y of n s is equal to g of s into c of s divided by 1 plus g of s c of s into r of s. This is due to the reference input. Then another term you will get g of s 1 plus g of s c of s into d u of s that is due to the input disturbance. Then another term 1 by 1 plus g of s c of s d y of s. This is due to the y n due to the output disturbance. <coughs> then you have a 1 plus g s c s into d n. This is due to the measurement noise input. So, we have a four inputs, four outputs. We got the that output expression into the Laplace transform, four output expression in terms of Laplace transform due to the contribution of four inputs in Laplace transform. So, if we write it in more compact form, in compact form, form if you write it that means matrix and vector form if you write it then this will come we keep it right hand side is the output signals in Laplace transform. So, E of s then you have a u p of s then you have a y of s this order we have kept it you can put it any order that does not matter accordingly trans function elements will change. So, what is our inputs? Inputs also R of s, d u of s, d y of s, d n of s. So, now these four equation you this four equation you see uh, that E s u p then your expression then y n expression then y y expression you if you write it in compact form you will get it 1 minus g of s minus 1 1 then this is corresponding to that one then next is you will get it c then 1 minus c s minus c s. Then third one is your g c g of s c of s g of s 1 minus g of s into c of s. Then last expression last row we can write g of s c of s g of s 1 and 1. And if you see in all the expression E s all the 1 plus g, g and c is common in all factors E s u p y p y and y n this factor is common. So, I am writing this vector 1 by this is 1 by that is is 1 plus g of s into c of s. So, denominator part is that one is common for all elements of this matrix. So, this is called transfer function matrix for multi input multi output case. Initially, we as for single input single output case, we used to call it is a transfer function. For since it is a multi input multi case, we have a four inputs are there, four outputs are there. So, naturally, we have a this transfer function dimension is 4 cross 4. How many elements are there? 16 elements. 
So, this feedback system is internally stable the this feedback system this is the what in general it is nothing but a, if you write it that output that all input signal is mapped to a output signal through a what is called a matrix which we call transformation matrix. So, our conclusion is the feedback system which is described into transformation model which is described in transformation is internally internally stable if and only if necessary and sufficient condition each element that means 1 by 1 plus g c c g minus g of s divided by 1 plus g s c s must be chill. each element of this matrix must be stable in the other sense the all the poles must be left up of the s plane then the system is internally stable means this indicates all internal signals e u p then y n then y are all stable then we will call the overall system is stable in the in that sense it is not that only input output point of view we told the system is stable. Input output means only R, Rs and Ys. So, the system is internally stable if and only if each element of the transformation, each element of the transfer function matrix has stable has stable poles or Harwit or Harwit. This is the internal stability of the system one has to judge like this way. Let us see the effect of this how we can reduce the disturbance effect at the output, how we can reduce the noise effect at the output. Let us consider now recall the our output equation recall the output equation. An output equation is we have written the first this we will write it this equation first agree okay? this equation. So, if you write it this one our y of s is equal to g of s c of s 1 plus g of s c of s into r of s this is due to the input and next is g of s 1 plus g of s c of s into d of u of s then minus or plus you can write it 1 plus g of s c of s into d y of s minus g of s c of s 1 plus g s c of s d n of s. Okay? This is the output of the system well, what we have considered is affected by reference input, input disturbance output disturbance and measurement noise or sensor noise. Then our next job will be how we can minimize the effect of disturbance and noises at the output that is our next target that how we will design a controller. So, that effect of disturbance at the output will be minimized. So, let us rewrite this equation we can rewrite that equation that um, 1 by let us call 1 by g of s is we defined by s 0 of s. Then this will be a <coughs> s 0 of s and this we denoted by t 0 of s this transformations. 
So, we can write it T 0 of s into R of s then G of s into s 0 of s into d u of s plus s 0 of s d y of s minus t 0 of s into d n of s. Now, we define that this s 0 of s which is nothing but a 1 plus g s c s we call this is a sensitivity function sensitivity sensitivity function. It has implication on the while we will design the system or when we will design the controller the sensitivity function. Then T 0 of s is called T 0 of s is a g of s c of s 1 plus g of s c of s is called complementary mentary sensitivity function C T B T function. So, <coughs> and it can be noted that you can note that T 0 of s plus s 0 of s that value is 1. So, now we will see look at this expression that I want to I want the effect of output disturbance at the input should be as small as possible. Then now what we can do it as you can remember that I mentioned that this signal input disturbance and measurement signal this signal are low frequency signal whereas, measurement noise noise is high frequency signal this is high frequency high frequency signal and this these are low frequency signal low frequency signal this and this. Okay, because it disturbance is the low frequency signal. So, <coughs> look at this expression. Since it is a low frequency signal and our plant is mostly strictly proper transformation, most of the practical plant is a strictly proper transformation okay, and it is a plant is a low pass filter. Okay. So, naturally if you see the frequency response of G, the magnitude will decrease with increasing in frequency. The high frequency the magnitude of G will be a small and with a high frequency with increasing in frequency it will magnitude will decrease. And now our job job is if the we can make it the sensitivity function at low frequency is very small then effect of disturbance at the output due to the output disturbance will be small then how will you make it? This s is small at low frequency. This it is obvious that g s g c of s you have to design in such a way that product of g s and c h which is called loop transformation must be very high at low frequency. If it is a very high it magnitude at low frequency then 1 by 1 plus g s will be small because this quantity is large. So, the effect of disturbance will be at the output will be as small as possible by selecting the this is called the loop transformation loop transformation the loop transformation value 
at low frequency is very high. This we can make it. And if you can make it this one, this effect of disturbance at the output will be small. And <coughs> here also you can see this is the low frequency signal this. Now, this things you see this 1 by g of s is small and g s is the strictly proper transformation. The effect of d u also will be small at the output, but this term will not be affected because this 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 quantity you see this g h it, it is it is it is affected with a high frequency signal not low frequency signal. So, this picture will not come when it is a low frequency signals are excited with the low frequency signals and this magnitude is small for this one <coughs> when it is excited with a noise this term will not come into the picture because d n is the high frequency signal we know this high frequency signal, the magnitude the loop transformation value is very small. So, this this is small 1 plus this small so, so it is nothing but a this is small compared to 1 you can neglect it. So, g s c s is very small agree okay, at when it is excited with a high frequency signal. So, we can now summarize this all these things into a this thing design our design of objective. You recall our equation y of s is equal to t 0 of s r s plus g s 0 of s d u of s plus s 0 of s d y of s minus t 0 of s d n of s. So, from this equation we can say for one design objective for good output disturbance rejection. What we have to do it? We have to do it output disturbance that output disturbance is this term that S 0 must be small in order to make s 0 the loop transform g s c s should be high at low frequency. So, in order to this this s of s must be or or s of j omega must be mod of s of j omega must be very very less than 1. This, this is this can be achieved if the loop transformation loop transformation that mod g of j omega h c c of j omega is very very greater than 1. So, that is one if we can make it s is equal to 0, then you see the effect of disturbance and output will not come into the picture. If s of j omega mod of this one is make it to 0 okay, at low frequency region, then perfect output disturbance rejection is possible. This is one conversion the output disturbance. Next is good for good tracking the reference input we have output should track the reference input. If output should track the reference input then T 0 T 0 of s must be equal to 1. I told you R s, d u, d y all are low frequency signals. So, 
next objective design objective even if you want to achieve next engineering for good for good set point tracking what does it mean the output should track the reference input that is this one the output should track the reference input in order to achieve this one if you see this equation if you this uh, t0 of s the small because rs is a small frequency agree so signal small frequency signal so the ts in the uh, small frequency range t0 of s must be equal to 1 so t0 of s nearly equal to 1 this can be achieved can be achieved if loop transformation g of j omega mod c of j omega mod is very very greater than 1. Now, if you what is t 0 of s? C g c h divided by 1 plus t 0 expression if you see c s g s c of s 1 plus g s c of s. Agree? S is equal to j omega this quantity if you want to make it very very greater than 1 very very greater than 1 then what is this quantity will be what will get it 1 is neglected with this one. So, this this cancel it will be 1 if you can loop transformation if it is high in low frequency and that is possible with since the plant is stable and is a strictly proper transformation agree that low frequency region the value of g is high and also design a controller c of s in that way it is a strictly proper transformation and also the magnitude of c j at low frequency is very high the product will be very high at low frequency. So, <coughs> third objective of the design is for good noise suppression for good noise suppression. Now, see that this noise suppression if you want to make it this one then this should be a 0 agree, but mind it this transformation what is this one this is excited with a high frequency signal this is a high frequency signal. signal. So, for suppression of high frequency signal that, that uh, suppression of the noise at the output because noise is the high frequency signal this must be equal to 0. In order to make it 0 then you have to make that loop transformation at high frequency the magnitude of that one must be nearly equal to 0 or as, as small as possible. So, for good suppression that T 0 of s must be as small as possible. If T 0 of s nearly equal to 0 then we would be and then then would be perfect perfect noise service noise suppression then there would be perfect noise suppression so how did you know I just mentioned it g of j omega at high frequency the magnitude is small. Similarly, c of j omega at high frequency the magnitude is product of this one will be very small. So, if you can design a controller in such a way 
at high frequency the magnitude of that g of g of plant magnitude is nearly equal to very small and g of s does not increase with changing in frequency high frequency range because it is a decreasing with high frequency range agree then product is small so we can write it note at high frequency g of j omega magnitude will be small because of it is a strictly proper transformation and stable one small since g of j of j of is strictly proper transformation this is one way and next since c of j omega c of j omega does not increase does not increase with frequency with frequency with high with high frequency okay so the t0 of j omega mod can be made can be made small at high frequency range at high frequency range high frequency range so this <coughs> the, the third objective is good noise resonance fourth one is your for less control energy to be supplied to the systems control energy effort for less control effort energy effort so this can be achieved by c of s s0 of s must be as small as possible as possible now look at this one that expression the control effort expression i'll just show you the control effort expression this one now this control effort effort u of t is influenced by r of s d of s y of s d on f s now see this one this c s divided by 1 plus g s of s so c s into s 0 of s so the control effort will be u of t or effort will be a small if you can make small because it is at low frequency range this so if you can make it so this is also you can make it small at low frequency because loop transformation is high loop transformation here is high so this is possible provided you can make it this as small as possible because this quantity at cs and at zero you may make it so because I can make it this is small because the loop transformation at low frequency our designer choice is that should be a loop transformation will be high which in time s 0 should be low. So, this way we can reduce the control effort in the into the system by c 0 of s by making c 0 of s as small as possible. So, our desirable shape of the loop transformation shape of loop transformation like this way 
this is omega and let us call this is our we are plotting loop transformation g of s c of j omega mod in these directions agree and we have a this region we are showing and this is the region so frequency response of our loop transformation should be like this way so this indicates the gain above this level in the low frequency that means loop gain should be more than loop gain this is the loop gain loop gain should be more than the this level more than this level at low frequency this is the loop gain with loop gain frequency versus magnitude of the magnitude of the loop loop transformations and loop transformation gain magnitude of the loop transformation must be greater than this level whereas the loop gain at high frequency this is at low frequency whereas the loop gain at high frequency must be less than this level must be less than this level so this is the you can say this is the gain loop gain below this level in high frequencies this is the loop gain you can write it loop gain this is loop gain loop gain means gs cs this is the distribution of desirable shape of our loop gain then we will be able to achieve the four of the design objectives that good tracking good disturbance rejection good noise suppression then less control effort if you can make the desirable shape of the loop transformation like this way that means at low frequency the loop gain must be more than this level and the loop gain at high frequency must be less than this level that is what i mean <coughs> and this point is called the mid frequency mid frequency and this determines bandwidth and stability margin so we have seen what the our design objective is there in true sense if you see in order to when we are going to design the what is called our controller to take care of these all design objectives our plant model we must know but generally when you you have given the actual plant and the plant model when you, when we are doing that some of the issues we are not taking into consideration when we are modeling the plant so the model what we will get it that is called the appro approximate mathematical model of the plant agree so there are plant uncertainties is there depending upon the two types of uncertainties structural uncertainties and the unstructured uncertainties suppose for example if you have a simple resistance inductance and capacitance connected in series 
and that circuit is excited with a input signal. And if you find out the transaction between the input signal and the output is the current flowing to the circuit, then transaction will contain the what is called numerator and denominator polynomial in S. Agree? So, in second order system you will get the new denominator polynomial of order 2 and each coefficient of the polynomial is nothing but a system parameters. System parameter means in this case it is a resistance, inductance and capacitance. So, this resistance and inductance and capacitance will change with time. Agree? Today we have, we have found out the transformation agree? for the value of R, L and C. Maybe three months after the parameter value may change it. So, it is model parameter it may do will change it, but we have designed the controller based on the nominal model. Then after three months the plant model is changed. So, same controller whether it will be stable, stabilize the plant or not that is the issue of our study next. Okay? So, next is your plant uncertainty. Plant uncertainty, plant uncertain T arises arises from the inevitable discrepancy. discrepancy between the plant and the model between the true plant and its model. So, plant uncertainty is there. So, <coughs> there are two types of uncertainty I will two, two types of uncertainty structured uncertainty two is unstructured uncertainty. Structure uncertainty, I just mentioned it that suppose we have modeled the system of RLC circuit now, after maybe one year or six months the parameters of RLC may change it agree? and we know particularly which coefficient of the denominator of the transformation polynomial is changed that we can know, that we know exactly the position where the parameters are changed, which coefficient parameters are changed. So, that is will be called structure uncertainty and unstructured uncertainty we have do not have much knowledge about the model uncertainties about that one. So, our problem is now robust, okay. before that I will check what do you mean by, we will just discuss that unstructured uncertainty. Suppose, first we consider the case additive uncertainties, additive uncertainties. We have a system, we have a controller, we have a plant and this is the model of the true plant this one. When we are doing the plant uh, model some of the issues we have not taken into consideration. <coughs> Either if you get the model from frequency response some of the high frequency uh, effect, high frequency signal effect where the plant 
magnitude is very small and it is highly corrupted with the noise that part is we are not able to model that part high frequency part of the model system will not be able to model it. So, this is the plant model and we consider whatever the discrepancy between the true plant and the model is denoted by a delta A of delta delta A of S. This is the and this output then it is a feedback R S this is Y S. So, this is the plant model and there is a discrepancy between the true plant and the model and its model and that discrepancy is compensated with a delta A of S. We do not know about the delta A that perturbation only we know its frequency response if you see what is the upper bound of that perturbation so we know it. So, <coughs> and we made an assumption this perturbation we made it a stable transfer function that perturbation is so, stable trans function. Now, if you see this one what is this model is that that one what is this model it is nothing but a g m of s plus delta a of s this block g m delta a of s. So, our problem is to study the stability of that one. So, let us call this is u this is b. So, let us call the controller c of s is designed based on the model parameters that model parameters g m of as model transformation. Now, our question is whether the how much this controller can withstand the perturbation before the closed loop system becomes unstable. So, I have to find out the bound of this LED perturbations. What is the maximum perturbation bound that controller can withstand before going to unstable. So, then we have to how we have to design that one that is our problem. So, next class we will see that uh, how to handle such type of problems to design a controller. Okay.